Good morning, everyone. Have you ever wondered if you encounter a fallen tree on the road, who should you approach? If you see an injured animal, who should you call? So the answer to those questions are pretty simple. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to know which agency to go to. My name is Adrian Tan, representing Municipal Services Office of Ministry of National Development. It is an honour here for me to represent Municipal Services Office, uh, in short MSO, to share with you on how MSO champion change in Municipal Services domain. So let me set the stage. So in your mind, you'll be thinking, what exactly are Municipal Services? What does it entail? Okay, so at the back, you can see pictures. You can see um, cute dogs. They're actually stray dogs. Then you can see um, the bursting pipes, which is uh, becoming a little bit more common. Then you will see um, pigeons around the grass patch, overflowing litter bins. I might need to talk to Daniel, um, the freaking guy on this. <laughs> and, and you can even see shared bike in canal. Why is it doing in the canal? The latest one is um, somewhere taken near my office. It's flooding. That's not all. You can see lighting maintenance, a cracked fruit path, overgrown shrubs, overgrown trees, cleanliness, um, damaged road signs. So these are some of the issues and services that MSO is looking at. Then next question will probably pop in your mind. MSO, wow, what exactly is MSO? You know it's Municipal Services Office, but probably you wouldn't know uh, how MSO comes about, what, what it does, why, is it, uh, why does it exist in the first place. So let me share a legendary story of the fish ball steak with you. This was mentioned in uh, the Prime Minister uh, National Day Rally in 21-4. So here's the story. So uh, there was this woman with the fish ball steaks, uh, eating the fish ball on the way home. So she dropped the stick on the ground. Then the next day when she returned, she, stopped, she saw the fish ball stick there. So she was a little bit puzzled. Why didn't uh, the fish ball stick uh, get cleared? So she did a little bit of research and found out that this road over here, the road that you see at the back, is managed by three different parties. That's a little bit mind-boggling. Puzzling, like what? So on the left, NEA take, takes care of the slope. In the center, the park connector, and parks take care of the park connector, obviously. Then at the side, there's a pavement nearer to the road in which uh, LTA take care of the road. So each of these agencies, they have different uh, cleaning schedules. So it really depends on uh, where you drop the sticks. Yeah. <laughs> So if you drop the stick in the middle, m will clean it up. At the side, LTA will clean it up. So this is, this is the story of how it came about. But let's say, let's say, a hypothetical question, if a civic-minded resident came across and picked the fish ball stick up, probably we might not exist in the first place. Maybe I wouldn't be here. Okay, that, that was a pretty simple issue on the fish ball stick. Let me bring you through something a little bit more complex. Okay, so this is the case of the, the pigeon nuisance. So people find that, oh, there's a lot of pigeon congregating in the area, um, making a lot of nuisance, making a lot of noise. It, it really annoys the people. But when, when we look into the case, this is really people feeding the pigeon, causing this problem. So as you see in the slide, you can see that multiple parties are involved in this simple issue in which uh, most of you probably uh, will view this as. So for NEA, they, they take care of the enforcement of high-rise littering. Let's say if you are eating some peanuts, watching Netflix, and throw it out of the window, they'll probably come after you. Yeah. Then uh, the other side will be the, the town council, which is in charge of uh, the calling of the pigeons 
And of course, uh, AVA, who has the legal rights to uh, enforce against feeding of pigeon. Because if you feed pigeon, um, they can actually pose health risks. So, so this is the kind of complex issues that MSO and partner agency face uh, daily. So in, in October 21-4, after the formation of MSO, we partner with 11 partner agency and 16 town councils. This is, where, this, is, this is where we want to ensure that um, a good delivery of our municipal services and make sure that uh, this sector, the municipal services uh, sector, is well taken care of. So what, 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 changed, uh, what changed the MSO effect? So the first change that we effect is the change in mindset and uh, behavior. So by and large, the agencies, they are pretty good at what they are doing. They excel in their own domain, in their respective area. However, sometimes the issues are not that clear-cut. It is not that straightforward. So in the case of pigeons, you can see that multiple agencies are, are required. So this is where MSO entered the picture. MSO came in, we partnered with our partner agency, we initiated something called a uh, collaborative effort. So, so uh, instead of doing things in silo, we come together, we, we work closely together to resolve uh, this kind of municipal issues. Some of it, and some of you guys might heard of it as a, a w, WOG approach or whole of government approach. This is essentially the same thing. Bring government agencies together, form systemic solution to resolve complex municipal issues. We also bring the town council on board because 80% of us uh, stay in HDB estates and uh, the bulk of the cases are actually handled by the town council. So it is important to bring all relative party on board. Then the next change is the adoption of technology. So uh, big data, data analytics are probably some uh, uh, a buzzword, but it is an enabler for the government to take the next step to provide you with better service. So this is where we, crea uh, we created a central feedback management system where we join with uh, our, our agency customer relationship uh, management system, Health Council Feedback Management System. So we are also the only agency that has the data warehouse that house uh, 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 data, feedback data from uh, the residents uh, all about municipal issues, regardless whether it is from the agencies or town councils. Yeah, we call it uh, the OSSG, One Service at SG. So with OSSG, we are also able to route cases uh, straight to uh, agencies to follow up uh, timely uh, and in a seamless manner. So uh, we have seen an improvement uh, in the productivity and uh, uh, the time taken to close a complex case decreased from 21 days to uh, 12 days, an improvement of uh, uh, 9 days. So, so once we have the feedback, we probably need to, uh, we, we need to analyze all this feedback, make sense of it, then find trends, find hotspot. This is what we did. So this is a case of the stray dogs. We wanted to know more about the stray dogs. So we partner with AVA, we have the feedback, we study the feedback, we analyze it, we, and we manage to find a correlation between stray dogs and uh, the food sources caused by human activities and even uh, for forested shelter area in, in which the dogs take the shelter. So as, as we delve deeper, we see that, oh, the, feed, the stray dogs actually feed on the waste food, the, the leftover food um, by the construction workers. So with this understanding, agencies is able to uh, 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 formulate a more targeted approach in which they, uh, they push out more stringent uh, inspection on waste food disposal and uh, stray dogs management at construction sites. That's not all. So um, with the prevalence of the IoT uh, and uh, the sensors, there's a scope for MSO to champion, champion another change. That is the adoption of the sensors to help our agencies. So in this case, we partner with MPARCS to come up with uh, the grass sensor. So what it does is it sends uh, the height of the grass um, and 
and uh, the movement of the contractors. So, uh, for this grass sensor, it reaps immediate benefit for both parties. For the contractor, they are able to self-audit. Let's say if they did not meet the height, they will cut until it meets the height. So, from the agency, they do not need to send someone physically down because the information is already there. The third change that we effect is to push out the One Service app. So the One Service app uh, uh, just turned three, two days ago, and with the launch of the app, residents now have the channel to able to submit municipal feedback on the go without knowing which agency or town council is in charge. So this is a big thing. It's a big breakthrough in municipal services sector because in the past, you need to, you, you made a municipal issue, you Google, you call the agencies. Now, you can just use the uh, One Service app to do it. In fact, you are able to see, uh, you are able to track cases that you submitted and see cases submitted by other users. So, the next one, the next change we have is the crowd tasking app called Help Party. So, this year, we, want, we wanted a bolder change. We want to, um, we want to uh, make sure that it is, we are not adopting just a passive approach in which when you encounter municipal issues, uh, you take the app and submit. We want to adopt something, uh, something called a more active approach in which we push out activities to you so we can work together with you and uh, we can help to build a better living environment. So to support the course, we have partnered with SMU, we have partnered with uh, MPARTS, uh, National Heritage Board, NHP, and uh, Singapore Land Authority, SLA, to come out with uh, something called a crowd-tasking uh, pilot project. So uh, this is called the Help Buddy. So the Help Buddy app was just uh, launched yesterday. So uh, it allows users to really, uh, really do interesting interesting activities, for example, uh, while on road back home, you could probably do some activities like uh, finding, finding which, which trees are blooming along the way. You can understand more about the species of the trees as, as part of our end park season size. Then uh, you could also find out about the history of the heritage marker uh, that is uh, maintained and managed by our National Heritage Board. Or, you could even tell us uh, what are some of the activities that people, uh, people do on the vacant state land. So probably it will help us in the future, in uh, the future development of the land. So before I end off uh, my entire presentation, I would like to encourage each and everyone out here to embrace change regardless of uh, regardless of the nature of the change, whether is it, is it in, in, in terms of your studies, whether it's in work, whether it is uh, in your design, whether it is in technology. Embrace change. Just remember that the only uh, constant is change. So everyone, just embrace change. Thank you for your attention. Uh, that's not all. Yeah, before I end off, yeah, let me, let me sell a little bit of things. In order to embrace change, you need to be part of the change. So what you could do is take out your mobile phone, go to the App Store, Apple App Store if you're an Apple user, or Android if you're an Android users. Just download the One Service app. Yeah, just key in One Service app, download One Service app, and be part of the movement. Okay? If not, you could always join us in our community. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.